Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys a few different ways that you can use masks inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So generally when you're going to use a mask, you're either going to do it over on the Fusion page when you're working with nodes, or you're going to use it on the color page. So let's start with the Fusion page. So when we're working on the Fusion page, usually we use a mask as an input for another node. So whenever you see a little blue diamond, that's usually an input for an effect mask, which means that it's going to take a mask node in order to determine what should be affected by that node and what shouldn't. So if we right click and go to add tool, we can create our mask and we do that under the mask category here. The simple ones would be rectangle or ellipse straightforward shapes but if you want to create custom shapes you can also use polygon or b for bezier spline the difference is that polygons can be straight lines but bezier spline lines are going to automatically kind of curve themselves so let's use a polygon node and we're going to get some tools up here at the top so if we draw it right the first time the only one we're really going to need here is click append where we just click to set endpoints and we draw a shape around whatever we need other tools allow you to add points in or select them and delete them. But let's go ahead and just draw a simple shape. So we're going to roughly mask this couch. So I'm going to left click to set an endpoint, and I'll just keep left clicking to keep adding points here. If you need to make a curve, you can left click and hold, and then you'll get a little bit more of a curve shape there, but it's not required. You can do straight lines if you prefer. And we'll just keep left clicking and drawing the shape that we need. Obviously, if you do an ellipse or a rectangle, it's going to be a lot more straightforward. But at the end, once you've basically created your path, you can left click on the first point to finalize your shape. So this is our polygon shape. Now, if we take this, we can feed it into any effect mask point. So let's try it on the media in. So when we do that, what's happening here is that everything outside of this mask is not going through. So basically the mask is determining what is going to actually go to this media input node. We can click on a mask though if we want to invert that, if we want to cut the couch out. So we can click over here on the inspector and now the couch is going to be the only thing that gets removed. So inverting a mask is really, really handy. Now if you want to break a node, you can just left click on the right side of it where it's feeding into an end point and we can use this polygon shape for something else. So let's try changing part of the color in the shot and we can do that by left clicking on the media input node so that it knows to add a node immediately after it. And then we can click on color corrector to add a color corrector node inside of this node sequence. So now we can shift the color from the base color to anything else that we need it to be. If you don't like what you're setting it to just hit Control z a couple times another thing we could do is actually desaturate the shot by pulling on the saturation and bringing it closer to zero so if we do that everything's going to look very dull but maybe we only want part of the scene to be desaturated then what we can do is use a mask for that so i'm going to connect this polygon mask into the color corrector here and you'll see that now that the mask is connected everything outside of the couch frame still has all of its color but using the invert tool, if we want the couch to be the only thing that is saturated with color, we can invert that and that's going to completely flip the results. Just to demonstrate another shape right now, we can right click, add tool, go to mask and let's do an ellipse shape. So an ellipse shape obviously is going to be a circle or an oval of some kind. And we can pull on the gizmos and then position it where we need it to be. So we could do that for a person's head or we could do that for a region of the screen. Obviously, if you need to mask shapes like a window, a rectangle is probably a little bit better for that. So I'm gonna select these nodes and remove them, and we're gonna move on to the color tab now. So on the color tab, you can mask as well, and one of the most common ways to do that is using power windows. So clicking over here on power windows, what you get here is the ability to add shapes to the screen. So you can see rectangle shapes, ellipse shapes. Here we have polygons, curves, and a gradient window. So if we zoom in, one of the most common uses for masks is going to be to blur out something in a shot, which is possible to do either on the fusion page or on the color page. So let's use a power window. When we click on this, you'll see a few different lines going around in the circle. So the white line is the actual mask itself. And then these other lines to the edges are softness boundaries. So you have softness on the inside and you have softness on the outside. If I pull on the softness, you can see how it stretches both of those lines away from or towards uh, the main power window line. 
You also notice over here in the node section that the mask shows through here. So we can see that this node is only going to be applying to whatever is in this power window mask. What this means is that if you change anything like the color or the blurriness, it's only going to be affecting this area. So we can find blur over here on the right and we can just blur it very easily by raising the blur amount. So if we set the blur basically to one, it's going to look quite blurry. And you can see that it's only the woman's head that's getting blurred out here, which is usually the standard way to do things. So when you're working on the color tab, there may be times where you want to apply effects like a blur to what's inside the power mask, but you may also want to simultaneously apply things to what's outside of the mask. So what you can do is you can click on the node section, right click, do add tool and add in an extra corrector node. So what we do is we connect this green to that green. We break the final output connector and then we connect the alpha channel from the first node to the second node. And then with the second node selected, we can come over here to the keying tab. And if you click right here, it's going to invert the node. So you can see now that this second corrector node has the inverse selection from the first node, which means that if we want to apply something to everything outside of the power window, now we have the ability to do that. And to finish the color correction, all we need to do is feed this output to the final output. So now we can take this color corrector node and we can do color changes. So if we wanted to make everything really purple for some reason, we can do that and you'll notice it only applies to what's outside of the color window. So I'm going to take this color window and I'm going to shrink it more closely to the woman's actual face. And one tool on the color page of Resolve that we can use is the tracker node. So usually a person is going to move around the screen. So you would actually want the power window to follow the person's face if you actually wanted to keep blurring it out. So I'm going to position it at the first frame on the person's face. We'll just leave all of the tracker properties checked so it is tracking in as many dimensions as possible. But anyway, we're going to position the power window there and then we're going to hit the track forward button down here. And if everything goes right, it should track the person's face across the shot. So let's hit track forward right there. And as the person moves, the power window is automatically tracking the person's head. In low movement shots like this, it's pretty easy to get good results. Sometimes I find that I get better results if I turn off things like 3D and rotate and keep it tracking on simpler dimensions. Uh, of course, the less stuff you're tracking, the faster the tracking is going to go as well. Uh, but here it seemed to do a really good job. So if we hit play now, we can see the power window tracking the head across the shot and it keeps the woman's face blurred out, which is really nice and a very cool feature in Resolve. So if you want to know more about tracking specifically, I have a couple of videos on my channel for doing tracking over on the Fusion tab using tracking tools. So you can see down here there is tracker down here. That is another way that you can do it if you need tracking information on a node setup. Generally, power windows and the tracker on the color tab is the simpler way to do it, though. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video, introducing you guys to masking on both the Fusion page and the color page of DaVinci Resolve 16. I hope you guys learned something from the video. Thanks for watching. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future video content.